A good day, everyone, and thanks for attending this presentation on the AutoSimply Barcode version 2022 release. Our presenter, Terence Eng, is the technical director from AutoSimply Software. He'll be walking you through the enhancements to the version 2022 release, as well as showcasing the new barcode module, Barcode Picklist. We're excited about the new opportunity to uh, review these solutions with you. Uh, we will be taking questions throughout the presentation, so please post those in the chat. And we thank you again for your time and attention today. Terence? All right. Thank you, Rob, for the introduction. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Terence from AutoSampler. Uh, special thanks to the guys at the West Coast. I know it's a bit early for you guys. So thank you very much for joining our session today. So uh, a few weeks back, we released the new version of uh, Inventory Barcode, uh, version 6.9.2022. And uh, uh, today, what we want to do is actually quickly go through the product and show you what we have done in terms of enhancing it, as well as show you the newest uh, module of barcode which is picklist, as Rob mentioned. Uh, for the benefit of those who are looking at barcode for the first time, so I just prepared a very, very short uh, slides uh, just to quickly introduce it to you. So uh, right now, if your client is not yet using barcode, essentially Sage 300 is back office recording of ERP transactions. Warehouse transactions are separate uh, from the recording, uh, data entry uh, is done a second time after something has happened in the real world. So everything is uh, paper and pencil, uh, and uh, there's a second person involved in data entry. So if that happens, uh, there's always a big chance of errors, and of course, it's not really very efficient. So what we want to do with the barcode solution is actually to make Sage 300 uh, extended to the front lines. So we want the warehouse guys to be able to record the transactions real time as it happens. So for example, if it's a PO receipt, we want the warehouse guy to be scanning the barcodes off the boxes, post it against the PO, and have it reflected immediately into inventory control. This makes Sage 300 up to date. No more negative stock balances, no more secondary data entry in the back office. And of course, to make all of that happen, we need the solution to be mobile. It needs to be real time. It needs to be easy to use for the warehouse. In terms of main benefit, uh, of course, there's always the ROI. You're saving time, you're saving resources. Uh, since ideally they are scanning the barcodes, whether it's the barcode for the document number, like a PO or SO, or if uh, they're scanning the item barcodes, the labels, to identify the items being transacted, uh, that's accurate inventory for you. If we don't make mistakes, of course, the customers would be happy. We don't deliver the wrong item, we deliver on time as well. And then lastly, because we're dealing with uh, a very simplified Sage interface on touchscreen uh, devices, it's a lot easier to implement uh, for, uh, and roll out to the client sites. So that's just a very brief uh, overview of what barcode is all about. Uh, at this point, let me now talk about barcode 2022. So the biggest uh, enhancement, of course, is picklist, but I'll leave it for later. What I have done is split the list of enhancements that we have done between new features that we have added on top of Sage 300 as, and uh, new functions that we have added on Sage 300. So for those of you who are familiar with barcode, you know that essentially we just move the transactions from the, from the back office to the front line. So when we do PO receipts, it's essentially the same. 
just who is doing it and how they are doing it using what device. Uh, in this part of my presentation, what I will highlight are things that we have improved on the barcode to match or remove the gaps with the Sage 300 uh, functionality. So the very first line there you can see is that now uh, using barcode 2022, we are now able to save uh, IC transactions rather than just posting it. So this is something that uh, some of you guys have been asking for. So a good example would be IC receipts, IC shipments, uh, internal usage, you know that you could save and maybe post later on the uh, back of the screens. Uh, another feature that we have added is allowing shipment without sales orders. So in the past, uh, we have limited our transactions only to uh, SO shipments with SO references. So this is mainly for stricter control, but we do recognize that Sage can do it. Uh, we do allow PO receipts without PO. So in this new version, we are now supporting shipments without SOs as well. On the lot serial allocation, we have actually improved the transaction flow quite a lot. So this started in version 2021. Uh, for those of you who have looked at the new versions uh, of the older uh, version of uh, 2021, you would have noticed the change already. But in 2022, we made it even more powerful. Aside from improving the flow, we now have the option to manually and or automatically allocate block serial. So again, for somebody familiar with Sage, this does not sound new. But in the past, this was uh, not supported in barcode. So we have now added this in, made it a bit easier for the user to do. Uh, another feature that we have added is enhanced shipment document details. So we now can allow the recording of, of ship via information, the tracking numbers in the uh, SO shipments, as well as additional common fields. So uh, we have done some customizations on this over the years, and now we just want it to be standard. Uh, another function that a lot of you guys have been asking for is automatically logging off idle users. So now in this new version, this is standard to barcode. We can set a maximum time uh, of idleness and we can uh, automatically log off users rather than forcing uh, killing off everybody in barcode. Uh, like what we have been doing before. And then lastly, uh, we now also allow OE shipments based on uh, SO committed quantities. So rather than using order quantities, for some of our clients, they want to use the committed function in Sage and ship against those. So for each one of these features, I'll make sure to uh, show it to you uh, a bit later once I do a transaction, uh, once I do the demo. Uh, but let me just rattle off the list of the major enhancements that we have done. Uh, in this next slide, what I want to highlight are the new Sage features that barcode can do that Sage actually cannot. So the first one there is, of course, uh, one of our title topics today, which is pick list. So in the past, uh, uh, clients have always wanted to be able to allocate and then pick against a pick list rather than be forced to uh, post an OE shipment immediately. So in this new version of Barcode 2022, we can now generate and process pick lists, and then have those pick lists be converted to shipments at a later time. We can allocate uh, order quantities to be picked, just like reservation. Uh, we can also reserve lots and serials to be picked. Uh, and then uh, another major feature about the pick list is that we can actually make it standalone with OE only. So of course, just like our stock pick module, we would 
recommended to be used together with the barcode solution. But if the client does not want to use barcode yet, just remember or just note that the pick list can stand alone with OE, with no barcode. Another major enhancements that we have done is location security. So with barcode 2022, we are now able to limit which location in Sage can the barcode user post transactions against. So uh, this is a, a major enhancement in terms of security. Uh, and the next feature there is what we call serial return. So uh, this is a uh, Re uh, this is very relevant to clients who handles a lot of serialized items. So rather than selecting invoice to be returned, what we now allow them to do is actually just scan the serial number and the barcode module can look for the matching invoice and post against it. So it's a much simpler way of dealing with uh, our RMA, right? And then uh, the last feature there is top tick support. So this was actually added back in 6.8, but uh, I just wanted to quickly highlight it that this feature allows us to uh, extend or improve upon the physical inventory functionality of barcode. Uh, and with the barcode 2022, we can do online and offline stock transactions as well as actually extend the number of users by virtue of the limited barcode count users. So those are uh, purchased as sets of four. So that's uh, basically the enhancements that we have done to barcode. And at this point, let me now go into the product itself. So let me just uh, minimize this screen. I did that stupidly. Just end show. Uh, let me now go into the uh, Sage 300 main menu. Again, for those of you who are looking at barcode for the first time, you can see that upon activation, barcode resides within the Sage main menu. Nothing special about this. Uh, but you would notice now that uh, in terms of the web service configuration, one minor thing that we have added is you can see here now uh, an option to trigger a diagnostic run, check, checking if everything looks correct in terms of uh, setting up barcode. So you could generate this uh, log file and send it to us if you are encountering any difficulties in connectivity with the Sage web server, uh, with the barcode uh, servers. Now, uh, another thing that uh, I would start, I would want to start off with is the saving of IC transactions first. So with that, uh, I'll go into the barcode uh, module or the app. Since I'm doing it using my laptop, this is actually the Windows UWP app. Uh, you would download this using Microsoft Store and uh, the only requirement for this is Windows 10 or Windows 11. So as long as the client is using either of those versions of Windows, you could now uh, connect to barcode using a desktop. So this is the main menu for barcode. Uh, for those who are using barcode right now, whether it's Windows CE or the older versions of barcode, you can already notice that we have several new buttons down there. But let me just start off with the saving functionality. So I'll click on the IC internal usage. And uh, here you can see that when I do a transaction on top of the screen, I now have an option to save as well as the original post button. So just for example, if I'm doing a scan of A11030, which is of course our favorite fluorescent task lamp item, this is an internal usage. Uh, I now have the option to save. So this is now just saving that document. 
and then you can call out this internal usage document in Sage internal usage screen and post it there. So if you want to go through maybe a validation step, somebody approving it before it's posted actually, that's how you would do it. So this is true for IC transactions. So that means if I go to the IC extended module, you, you can do the same for receipt. You can do the same as well for the, uh, let's say the IC shipment. All right, so that's saving of IC transactions. With uh, the next feature I would highlight is the SO shipment without SO. So in the past, again, we don't support it, but starting in barcode 2022, you can do it. So of course, just like in Sage, we need to identify the customer we are processing here. So you know that I could always search. Ideally, I'm scanning the uh, ID of the customer. And here, I could actually just skip. Rather than selecting sales orders to be picked, I can just skip and then scan items to be shipped. So I won't go through the transactions anymore. Uh, it's essentially the same as the uh, PO receipt without PO. But now we can support it. And uh, in conjunction with this feature, notice how in the user security setup of barcode, you, got, you now have the option whether you allow it or not. Same as with uh, receiving without PO. So it's up to you or the client if they want to enable that functionality. All right. So the next thing I want to quickly show you is the lot allocation. So uh, let's do an OE shipment then. So let's say I know that the sales order I want to process as a one. So I could always search this way in barcode. And then uh, let's pick an item with uh, lock or serialized uh, control. So let's go and do calculator. So this is the new enhanced lock serial uh, capture process, processing screen. Ideally, the client is scanning the lock number and then uh, posting it. So that would be, of course, the most accurate way of doing barcode transactions. But in version 2022, notice now that I can search for lots. So we don't support this before. And now I can just go in and select which lots I want to pick. And then from here, just go ahead and post. I can also, of course, change the entity. Another thing I would highlight here is notice that we now have an allocate lot function as well. This is the allocate, just like the auto allocate function of Sage. So let's say I want to auto allocate 10 and the system will just allocate it just like Sage. So this is something uh, that we have enhanced in this version. All right. Terrence, quick question on that. Is the ability to save versus post uh, able to be configured on a user by user basis? Yes. So, oh, wait, the saving? Uh, not the saving. <laughs> that one is no. Sorry, sorry. Uh, it, if we don't have a uh, security right right now that prevents them from saving or posting. So we either give them the IC, just for example, IC internal usage. Can they do that? But then we don't distinguish between save or post. They can do both transactions right now. I'll mark it as something that maybe we can enhance moving forward. All right. And there was one other question about setting the amount of time before logging out idle users. Oh, okay. We can jump to that topic next. So for the idle time, what we have done actually is under the options of barcode, we now have here a maximum idle time limit. So I could set this, let's say, to five minutes. And then, of course, after five minutes, 
the user would be kicked out of the system if it's idle. But in conjunction with that, we also have a user master setting, which allows you to disable it for select users. So this is just, for example, a Shopfloor user would always be online because they're continuously doing transactions. So you do have that option there. All right. So that's uh, regarding the uh, maximum idle time uh, functionality. Uh, the next quick thing is just for the additional fields on the OE shipment screen. So I can easily show that as well. So order 100. Uh, you would notice that uh, when I go and do an OE shipment, I now have the option to select the ship via method as well as input tracking number. Uh, I can also put that information on the item level. So this is actually uh, just matching what the uh, functionality of Sage is. All right. Now, uh, the last thing that we have uh, added to uh, match Sage functionality is the option to ship based on committed quantities. So that is actually something configurable at the user level as well. So you would see here that for this barcode user, I now have an option to ship based on committed quantity only. So if, if the quantity has not yet been committed in uh, order entry, then you won't be able to ship uh, against that SO yet. So we now can do that. So that means for some clients, if they want to put or use committed quantity for only certain uh, areas or users, it's possible. All right. Uh, next is uh, the features that we have uh, added on top of Surge. So staying on the user master, you would also notice now that we have added uh, a location security option. So for each barcode user, I could actually now define that they can only post transactions against a specific location in Sage. If it's blank, obviously uh, the system would assume you can do transactions against all locations. All right. Uh, I actually realized that I forgot something uh, in my slides. We actually also added label printing. So this has been uh, something people have been chasing us for the past couple of years. And now we are able to support not only the printing of forms. So if you remember, starting in the 6.8 version, we actually uh, allow the triggering, the automatic printing of uh, Sage forms like the OE shipment, uh, PO receipt. Uh, and the likes. It's based on the default printer here. And uh, this fields automatically will pick out the default form in Sage unless you replace it with a custom form for this specific user. So on top of that, we have also added now the option to print labels. So you can see here that the printing of labels uh, because this could be a specific, in the real world, it could be a mobile printer attached to this particular user. So I can assign the printer to the user. I can also assign a specific label format to be used against PO receipt, IC receipt, and uh, of course, our manufacturing receipt transaction as well. Uh, Notice that now we also have options to directly print to printer or just print to file. So uh, this particular functionality was added because we noticed that if we rely on Sage to trigger the printing, sometimes it fails. So just to get around that issue, we have the option here to generate it to a file and of course, the printing of the file on the printer now is more direct. It won't go through the 
sage processing. All right. So I forgot to put that on my slide, but it's actually one of the major enhancements we did for 6.9. Uh, the next thing I want to show you before I go into the pick list is actually the serial return. So here, let me go back to the uh, barcode screen, go out of the OA shipment screen, and uh, click on the serial return function here. So of course, in Sage, we know we have the OE return. Uh, you have the, sh uh, it could be based against the shipment or an invoice. So this is uh, a feature that we already support way back at the beginning. Uh, we have added serial return. And in this case, the idea is we don't want to look for a specific invoice anymore. Since I, my item is serialized, Sage theoretically knows which invoice we are referring to. So here, again, either I search or just scan the customer I'm processing. And then here, I'm capturing the serial number. So for example, it's April 00125. So the system knows this serial number for this answering machine is from invoice 63. And then maybe I have another item coming in, 00115, for example. So of course it has to be for the same customer, but this one is now coming from another invoice. And from here, we can just post to create a uh, invoice return transaction in Sage. So for some industries, we believe uh, this function would be very useful. All right. So with that, let's now go into the uh, main enhancement, which is picklist. So again, barcode supports the picklist function. We bundled it with barcode because that's how we want it to be used. But Notice that after installing barcode 2022, the pick list function actually resides within the order entry module. So that means uh, even if you don't want to use barcode, you can install it. The ID pick list function would still be shown under order entry met, or the order entry module, and it would function using the desktop screens of Sage. So this is not yet supporting web screens at the moment. It has to be the classic screens of Sage. Uh, if I click on the ID pick list function, you can see here that now we have this small routine for pick lists. So the first functionality there is generating of pick lists. So if I open the screen, uh, as you can imagine, this is uh, the standard way that I would want to extract uh, sales orders into a pick list. So it's based on uh, filters, uh, on order number, item number, it can be category, of course, customers, their location, ship via, and then you have the order dates, delivery by, and the expected shipment dates, filters. So if I have a sales order, uh, let me just go in here and look at my sales order 100. So let's say uh, order 100. So this is a very old record, of course. So it's 6 18 2020. So just for our purpose today, uh, I'll just use that particular document and then generate a filter against, let's say, well, I'll do it the simplest way, order number. So let's say order 100 to order 100. Sorry. But obviously, in the real world, we expect filters to be based on due dates and possibly other parameters. This is now just, uh, oh, sorry, I have to match my record because the system is very strict. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, what date was it? Okay, and she, uh, she what the time the application. Mm -hmm. 
I'll just create a new one. So 1400 is my customer. Uh, just for today, the item I want to process is a fluorescent desk lamp for 100 pieces. And I'll just create one with a uh, lock number or serial track item. So let's say I have this sales order. So that's order 74. And uh, let me now just extract that specific order into this screen. So order 74. So this is now uh, this item to be picked. And of course, uh, I could select which ones in particular would be processed. But uh, just to make it simple, let's say I want to process this one order and create a pick list. So this is now generating a pick list number three, which could be a combination of multiple sales orders, multiple items with different delivery dates. Uh, the next step would be to do the pick list processing. And here you can see that I could call out the pick list. And from here, aside from putting descriptions, references, and comments, I could actually allocate how much I really want to pick. And if, let's say, the item is a uh, lot track, I could also strictly allocate that I want them to pick, let's say, from this particular lot five, and then uh, add another one, let's say from this lot five. So this is like replacing the order entry lot allocation. We can also support that if a client wants to put in the lot to be picked on order entry, but uh, this is actually a better way of doing it, we think. And let's say I want to pick 10 of this and save. From here, of course, I could print out my pick list. So I could generate a pick list report and uh, print it out. Uh, this is like a pick list form that we just uh, designed uh, to be the default uh, pick list format for us. So my crystal is a bit slow. Just wait for it for a moment. So it could look something like this. And uh, after the picking, if of course, if I don't have barcode, then the only thing that they can do is go back to my pick list screen and actually confirm how much are they picking at this moment, how much has already been picked for that item. And notice now that I could uh, select which lock and change the quantities. So let's say two here and then three there. At this point, that's what I have picked. I could save this and come back to it for uh, additional picking at a later time. So that's what the pick list module is doing on the uh, desktop user interface. Ideally, the client would use it together with barcode so once somebody has created the pick list, then in the real world, uh, the user can then uh, use the barcode mobile devices to do picking. So again, I would scan the pick list or I can just look for it uh, if I want to. Uh, and then let's say uh, I'll go back and answer the questions later. And from here, just input what I am picking. So let's say uh, for the answering machine serial track item, let's say out of this quantity to be picked, I have picked 15 and then I can allocate serial numbers if I want. So this is uh, the lazy way of doing it. Ideally, of course, uh, they are not doing it that way. They should be scanning the serials real time, but if they don't have scanners, 
just as I showed you earlier, I can do it this way as well. So I can show which serial numbers are available and then pick accordingly. The same for calculator, which is log track. I could also search and then assign maybe picking from here and here. So let's say just six. So this is what I have picked. Uh, and then eventually I would post. Okay, let me, before I post, let me just uh, highlight that in barcode, uh, starting from 6A, actually we have added this review screen. So people can actually review what they are doing prior to posting it. And then this is now updating the pick list. So that's now uh, reflecting on pick list number two. And if I go back here, you would see here that uh, the system actually is showing what I have picked. And then if I look at the block numbers, it's this one. So essentially that's what the pick list module is doing. Eventually, uh, once we are ready, this is approved. And then notice now that the create shipment function is enabled. And if I click on create shipment, it's just triggering. Uh, this is because I played the data a while ago. It would just trigger the creation of a shipment in uh, Sage OE. So something like this. So if it's approved, it will just create the shipment 68, and then you would now have that uh, record within Sage. All right. So uh, that's uh, basically pick list. Some additional features here. Notice that if the pick list is dealing with a lot of items, I have actually the option to do some filtering at the pick list screen. So maybe I want to specify a certain location only, or it could be, let's say, uh, item number or description. So let's say it's lamp. So I could actually apply this filter. Yeah. The date has to match, of course. But uh, this one would then uh, allow me to filter according to what items would be processed. OK. I think there were some questions. Yes, the first question, Terence, on the pick list was, when you have multiple orders being picked for the same item and you're short, how does it allocate the items to the orders? Uh, if, if you're doing the, auto, well, the allocation is just right now manually entered here. So if you don't really have enough stock, then uh, there's no, auto allocation logic at the moment. So it's not like committed quantity. So this is just what I want to pick. Right now we don't auto allocate it at the moment. But we can also base it on committed quantity. So I guess the question could be if they want it to be uh, very strict. So some companies I know are very strict. They want a committing function. So we could still take advantage of the committed quantity in the SO. So instead of the default uh, pick quantity to be based on order quantity, we can actually switch it over to committed quantity. So what they have committed in the SO is now what I can only pick using the fitness functionality. I think that might be uh, what the question meant. Okay, another question. For the pick list, can the item lines be at separate locations and picked by different users? The pick list is not assigned per user. So that's something that uh, we are looking at right now just to make it really uh, paperless. So right now the document pick list, there's no assignment to a specific uh, user yet. 
so we don't track it in that sense. Uh, just like in barcode, an SO can be processed by multiple uh, users of barcode. We don't restrict it in any way. As for the location, uh, right now we base it off SO. So uh, it, it won't be picked from different locations just yet. So we need to follow what is in the SO and that would be where it will be picked. All right. All right, next question. Does barcode pick list support the ORCID bin tracking module? Ah, uh, that's what's next. <laughs> so we don't support bin tracking yet, just like uh, the stock pick module does not support uh, bin tracking just yet. But that's the next step for us, for sure. Okay, and then a general question. What specific need was this new pick list module designed to fill? Mm. Uh, the, the, the easiest to answer there would be to minimize the processing of associations. So we do have clients that they want, let's say, for example, to have one SO and one shipment only. Uh, in Sage, of course, you can process any number of shipments, but then uh, it gives them trouble. And uh, standard Sage SO shipment does not allow you to save. The pick list can help uh, with respect to that. So you could have somebody do the actual picking on the floor, have it recorded into Sage, and then wait until the whole uh, shipment has been picked before it is posted all together. So that's one uh, major benefit of it. Second is uh, just for the allocating of the lots. So this is, we think, a better way of how uh, users can allocate lot or serials to be picked, a better way to control it at least. So that's the allocated quantity column here. And uh, during the picking, we actually can have an option whether to allow users to override it or it's limited only to what has been allocated. So that's the checkbox over here. So if this is, uh, if I disable adding new lot serial, you're forced to pick based on what has been allocated. Um, so those are just some of the main benefits for this checklist function. Very good. Uh, this question, I think you answered previously, is there future enhancements planned to assign the pick list for particular users? Mm, we're looking into that. Right now, uh, Barcode does not do that, but uh, we are aware that people have been asking for it. So sort of like it goes a little bit into workflow a bit. Uh, right now, we haven't done it yet, but definitely we're thinking about it. And speaking of workflow, the question is, how do you envision the workflow with the approved status? When multiple orders are picked, how does then a shipper know which items go into which box? Do they have to print mm. a paper copy of the shipment? For now, that would be the case. So we don't have, uh, since we don't have the assignment of the transaction to a user, there's no notification there. So we still rely on the status flag on the picklist screen. So it's still a back office task to be approved, maybe printed out, and then uh, have the picklist number expressed as a barcode for easy scanning. All right. And one more question here the fo a follow up question on the locations. Assume mm -hmm. the order was created with lines at different locations. Do the mm -hmm. lines have to be picked all at once or can some be picked at one location and some at another location by a different user? Uh, it can be picked at a different time. Uh, when we generate the pick list, that's one of the parameters that can be used as a filter. So if they want it to be separated, they can. If one order has 10 locations inside, it can still be generated together into a pick list. So this may be uh, 
can be customized for them if they want to add some control here. But right now, the pick list is just based on whatever is extracted to it. It could be multiple SO, uh, multiple customers, multiple locations, and nothing is preventing the user from uh, picking from every or different locations right now. All right, very good. Well, those are all the questions that are currently in the chat. If there are any other questions, you have a few more uh, seconds here to pose those questions. And if not, then uh, I guess we'll refer back to you, Terence, for any closing comments. Oh, sure. Uh, let me just go back to my slide. So this is mainly for the benefit of uh, those who have not, uh, who are not too familiar with barcode. So let me just uh, quickly reiterate that the barcode solution does work on different devices. So primarily right now we're working with Android devices, something like a handheld uh, Zebra MC33 or TC20. Uh, it could also work with phones and tablets. So some clients will uh, just add a barcode gun to a tablet and then scan using that method. Uh, we can work with uh, Apple devices as well. So the only requirement is version now or later. So that means iPhones, uh, iPads, and uh, just like what I'm showing you right now, it can also run on Windows 10, 11 uh, UWT. So as long as, uh, we are using those operating systems. Uh, we can we can support it on laptop and PCs as well. And uh, before I answer the questions that are that are being added, I just uh, want to of course reiterate in terms of uh, Sage version support. So we limit it now to 2018 to of course the current 2022. So that's version 6.5 to 6.9. So this is mainly because uh, we wanted to limit the uh, the testing that we have to do from a quality control perspective. So if you have a client that needs uh, integration to a older version of Sage, like 2017, 2015, uh, we might have to look at it on a per project basis, just so that we need to check if the, if the function that we want can still uh, work with that old version of Sage, all right? And uh, again, for those who are not familiar with barcode, I also just want to highlight that we do support GS1 HIBC barcodes. So that means uh, we can actually combine multiple information uh, into one label. So in this example, I have the item number, uh, the lot number, the serial number, and the expiry date. So that's four information into one barcode. And of course, if we don't want it to be that long, you can always use uh, JS1 data matrix or JS1 QR code uh, to do it. Uh, so essentially that's for my presentation. And uh, I think there was two questions. Yeah, the first one, can you show how the label printing works on PO receipts? Uh, okay. Uh, I won't be able to really show it to you because I'm not connected to a printer right now. But uh, I could quickly demonstrate. I could quickly show you the setup. So if I wanted to activate label print time, what it needs to me is uh, I can choose to directly print to a label printer, or to a text file. And then uh, here I could assign the printer to be used. Uh, okay. It's looking for a printer, sorry. Okay, so uh, I won't be able to do it really, but uh, this is how you would assign the printer. And notice now that I have here an option 
whether uh, I want the label count to be by default zero, one, or maybe the receipt quantity. So for those of you who are familiar in Sage PO receipt, we do have that number of label field. And that's exactly what we would be using for PO receipt and the IC receipt. So for example, I just set it to zero for now. If I wanted to use a different uh, format, I could change it here. But uh, if I now go into the barcode and do a PO receipt, so this one won't actually come out. But uh, let's say I want to do PM01 for five pieces. You can see it, that we have here a number of labels to be printed. So I could indicate five. It could be automatically five or it could be by default one. At this point, I could post. And uh, after I post, it would try to print, but there are of course uh, grammatical problems, but it would trigger the printing upon posting. So it does not really affect the flow, but uh, that's how you would set it up in Marco. All right. Great, and the last question here is, is there an option to bypass the workflow and create a shipment without approval? In other words, once it's picked, create the shipment automatically. Uh, right now, uh, not yet. So the shipment uh, for the pick list is uh, triggered by that option uh, a while ago. So we need it to be approved and then create the shipment. So there's no uh, based on the pick list and trigger of the shipment. We are assuming that it could be uh, partially picked. That's why we need to have that separate trigger at the moment. All right. Great. Thank you, Terrence. And thank you, everyone, for your questions, for your time and attention today. We appreciate it very much. Uh, well, oh, one last question here at the last minute. Can you save an IC transfer and then recall it in barcode? Right now, not yet. So when we choose to save the document, we assume that it would be uh, retrieved in the back office Sage desktop screen and posted there. So we, we, we think that the reason why we're saving is because there's somebody who has to check it later on. All right, very good. All right, with that, we'll end the presentation today. Thank you again for your time. We appreciate it very much. And thank you, Terrence, for your presentation today. It was very good. All right. Thank you again, guys, for your time. And we look forward to seeing you all in person one day very soon. Take care.